Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the multi-hypothesis tracker, often called MHT. We will introduce the basic idea, and we will present the prediction and the update for one variant of MHT called hypothesis-oriented, or HOMHT. Now, actually, the first variant of MHT that was published, it included inference on the number of objects. But to keep things simple, in this course, we're going to limit ourselves to a known number of objects. The basic idea in MHT is that we, in the update, find the best M associations and prune all other associations. After the update with multiple associations, we use what is called reduction methods to make sure that the posterior density has at most n max hypotheses. Specifically, we use pruning and capping. The motivation behind MHT can be understood in terms of the approximation of the posterior density. By having an approximation with several hypotheses that have high probability, we should get a more accurate tracking filter than we would have with fewer hypotheses. So the number of hypotheses is kept below a maximum number because this allows us to control the computational cost of the algorithm. The more hypotheses we have, the more computationally costly the MHT algorithm is. The exact posterior density is approximated by a density with multiple hypotheses, indexed by lowercase h, and we denote the number of hypotheses by calligraphic h. So each hypothesis corresponds to a sequence of valid data associations. We can say that there are two variants of MHT that can be found in the object tracking literature. One called hypothesis-oriented, or HO, and one called track-oriented, or TO. We will start with hypothesis-oriented MHT, and we'll come back to track-oriented. In hypothesis-oriented MHT, the density is parameterized by log weights and object densities for each hypothesis H. The log weight is the log of the probability of the hypothesis, and the reason we have log weights instead of weights has to do with numerical aspects. In implementations, it is not uncommon to have to deal with very small numbers. And when the algorithm is running, the true result of a floating point operation could end up being closer to zero than the smallest value that can be represented as a normal floating point number. And by having log weights, this can often be avoided. Hypothesis-oriented MHT has three main parts. For each time step, we start with a chapman kolmogorov prediction. Then we have the update, where we compute multiple associations for each predicted hypothesis and construct the posterior hypotheses. And the last step is the reduction, where we do pruning and capping. As we have seen before, when we have a density with multiple hypotheses, we can predict each hypothesis independent of the other hypotheses, and in each hypothesis, we can predict each object independent of the other objects. And the log weights or log probabilities of the hypotheses are not affected by the prediction. So in hypothesis-oriented MHT, the prediction starts with the posterior parameters at time k minus one, that is the log weights and the densities for all objects and all hypotheses, and the predicted parameters are given by applying the prediction to each object density. If we have Gaussian densities and linear Gaussian transition density, we use the Kalman prediction. We can also note here that the number of hypotheses is the same and the log weights are the same. So the prediction in hypothesis-oriented MHC is relatively simple. However, the update is a bit more complicated. In the update, we begin with the predicted parameters and we initialize an index variable hk to zero. Lowercase hk is the index for the posterior hypotheses. Then for each predicted hypothesis, we first create a cost matrix for the assignment problem and then we compute capital M associations, theta m. We're going to come back to how this number of data associations is selected. Then, for each association M, we increase the posterior index by one. And we do so because each combination of the predicted hypothesis and data association will lead to a hypothesis in the posterior density. For this predicted hypothesis and association, we compute the posterior parameters. To do so, we initialize the posterior log weight L tilde as the predicted log weight. For each object, we use the base update if a measurement has been associated, and if a measurement has not been associated, the posterior density is proportional to the predicted times the probability of misdetection. 
And if the densities are Gaussian and the measurement model is linear and Gaussian, we use the Kalman update here. The log weight for this object and this association, L i theta i h, is added to the log weight of the posterior hypothesis. And by doing this for each object, we get the posterior object densities for this hypothesis and the unnormalized log weight L tilde. After doing this for each predicted hypothesis and each data association, we have the number of posterior hypotheses. The log weights L tilde have to be normalized and we will show shortly how this can be achieved. And that is the last step of the hypothesis-oriented MHT update. We now have the posterior parameters. Before talking about reduction of the posterior MHT density, there are two things that we need to give some more details about. The first is how we can decide the number of associations, capital M, and the second is how we can normalize the log weights. So how do we choose the number of associations for each predicted hypothesis? One very simple choice is to have a fixed number like 10 or 100 or 1000 or something even larger. Another way to set M is to use the log weights. By multiplying the maximum number of hypotheses, calligraphic H max, with the weight given by exponential of the log weight, and then rounding, we get an integer number of associations. If we add these numbers, the sum will be approximately equal to H max, which is the maximum number of hypotheses that we want to keep. And this is a good thing, because it means that the number of hypotheses in the posterior before we do any reduction is predictable. We know that it will be at most H max. Another way to motivate this choice is that we focus more on predicted hypotheses that have high probability and we compute more associations for them. It is often the case that posterior hypotheses with high probability are descendants of predicted hypotheses with high probability. Lastly, we want to point out that practical computational requirements often can lead us towards an answer for how many hypotheses that we can deal with. If the system is running offline and time is not a major restriction, we can use many hypotheses. However, for real-time applications, the algorithm must handle all hypotheses within a certain amount of time, which might require limiting the maximum number of hypotheses. We also need the normalized posterior log weights. One way to do this normalization without computing the actual weights is given here. This builds upon a summation subtraction rule that is really useful when we are dealing with log probabilities and need to compute a sum. As we mentioned earlier, the reason for working with log weights is that it avoids some numerical problems that can occur. And as a general rule of thumb, it is a good idea in object tracking to try to avoid computing probabilities and predicted likelihoods directly. It is often a better choice to compute the log probability and log likelihood. The last part of hypothesis-oriented MHT is the reduction, where we reduce the number of hypotheses in the posterior density. First, we do pruning of the hypotheses whose log weight is smaller than some threshold, capital gamma. Gamma is often set smaller than log of 0.01, quite often much smaller than that. The reason for doing this pruning is that if the log weight is really small, then the probability of the hypothesis is really small, and it makes sense to remove it and instead focus the computational resources on the hypotheses that have a higher probability. After the pruning, if we still have too many hypotheses, we do capping and just keep the hypotheses that have largest log weights. And after the pruning and the capping, it's important that we renormalize the log weights such that they sum to log of one. And we also wish to point out that it is possible to do merging as a type of MHT reduction. However, that is outside the scope of this course.